So good evening, everybody, and welcome, welcome to this webinar by our eminent speaker today, Dr. David Tupu. Uh, he is from Kenya, Nairobi, and uh, welcome, Dr. David. Thank you for doing this for us. Uh, Dr. David is an ICFT teacher. Please, 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 and uh, thank you for doing this for us. Dr. David, as I said, is an ICF PCC coach and he's also a certified executive coach. His professional experience has been a senior executive in the banking sector. No, the, I, 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 was, the, the, I was a he was I can't hear tickets. It's, it's, it's not done. Sorry for this. Kindly please mute, keep yourselves muted. So he's been a CEO and has headed various departments which have been involved in sales, business growth, operationals, human capitals, so many, many other departments. And from his rich experience, Dr. David has now started coaching CEOs and other senior executives. He's been doing this for almost a week, almost a decade. He has served as president of the ICF Kenya chapter in 2021, and currently he serves as advisor to the ICF Kenya chapter board. He also serves as a non-executive director on several boards. Today, he brings us the nuances involved in coaching a CEO whether coaching a CEO is different from coaching anybody else, or are there some special tricks involved in coaching a CEO? So let's hear from Dr. David. And uh, Dr. David, thank you so much. And we eagerly wait to understand and hear from you as to what are the differences in coaching a CEO. Before I give it to you, as usual, this is the webinar which will let you have your CEOs. Uh, so I will be submitting a link at the end of the webinar. Kindly fill in the form and submit it, and you will get your uh, CEOs, compiled CEOs, until November in the month of December. So with this, over to you completely, Dr. Thank you. Please let me know if my screen is coming okay on your end, or uh, do you see it? I hope on the full we screen mode. It. We can see it perfectly. Full screen mode. Thank you. Thank you very much uh, for the invitation. And uh, I'm looking forward to this conversation with yourselves. I will try and speak a little slower than I normally would so that in case you have difficulty in uh, getting my accent, then uh, by speaking slowly, we should be able to connect. Uh, thank you very much for this invite, as I've said, and as, as, as per the introduction, I've had the benefit of uh, being uh, a practicing leader. I've had the benefit of uh, being a CEO. I've been a bit, had the benefit of coaching CEOs and other leaders. And today I want us to have a conversation about uh, how coaching a CEO is. And this is an important conversation uh, and we'll break it into three parts. We'll talk about uh, the CEO. We'll try and unpack who the CEO is so that we, we demystify who this person is we are coaching. And the second bit of our conversation, we'll, we'll talk about ourselves as a person who is coaching the CEO just so that we, 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 we create the, the understanding of who we are when we appear before the CEO. And then the third bit is the important piece, which is how the coaching engagement then goes with the CEO. Now, why is this conversation important for us as coaches? Of course, over and above the, the obvious reason that coaching the CEOs makes a lot of commercial uh, sense. The CEO is most likely able to pay a better premium than a lot of the other clients. The CEO is uh, likely to have much more. So from a commercial sense, that's, that's an obvious uh, why it's an important conversation. But the other reason why this conversation is important is, is the fact that there is a multiplier effect in coaching the CEO. When you coach the CEO and you have the impact to the CEO, that impact is likely to go much more beyond just that one person that you are coaching. Because as we'll see when you are unpacking the CEO, they impact much more people, they impact a much wider community. So coaching the CEO and you do it well, you have a multiplier effect. And as coaches, we want to have as much impact as possible to as many people as possible. The second thing why this conversation is, is important is for us as coaches, it has the brand building capability. It builds your brand as a coach. When you coach, at that level and you do it well, your brand builds faster, the, your, your, your name reaches much more people. 
And the contrary is also true, that if you don't do it well, then it's very easy to destroy your brand. So it's important then when you do start engaging in coaching CEOs that you want to do it and do it very well so that it enhances your brand. Now, this is also a door opener for other engagements. When you do a, a CEO uh, coaching well, you then are able to open doors for other engagements, either within the same organization or you get references to, to other uh, organizations. So this conversation then beyond just the commercial sense is a very important conversation for us as coaches as we grow in our coaching profession. So let's, let's, let's talk about the first bit of our conversation, which is about the CEO. Let's talk about the CEO. And I want us to, to have uh, three observations about the CEO. The first observation may sound obvious because the CEO is the, at the very top of the organization. He is the apex of the organization. Now, what does this actually mean? when you are coaching at the top of the organization. And it's important as coaches that we bear this in mind. This means that the back stops with this person. Everything revolves around him and it comes right at his doorstep. Now, it means that everyone is looking up at this person, is looking up to this person, is a person with the answers uh, to many issues, is a person with the, who will crack where things are not uh, looking well. So everybody is looking up to him. And remember, every organization has just but one CEO sees, whereas we have many managers, the CEO is only one, and everybody is looking up to them. People have very high expectation on this person. Now, all these dynamics make coaching the CEO uh, have a different nuance than coaching anybody else. So there are very high expectations on this person. This person is the face of the organization. When the people outside there look at the organization, this is the person, when they see this person, they see the organization. Now, all these uh, bits about being the top of the organization have implications on how then you engage with the coaching engagement. Beyond being the face of the organization, what this means is that they are soaking in a lot. This human being is uh, soaking in a lot in their day-to-day -day, uh, operations. And this person sets the tone for the organization. And above all, and this is important for, for, for us as coaches, is they hold a lot of potential to then making the transformation for the organization. They are very great transformational agents. Now that's the CEO. This is really the first thing that I want us to make an observation about the CEO. Now the second thing, which is tied to the third thing that I want to make an observation is, is that you can look at the CEO as two sides of the same coin. And I want us here to refer to a model that we are very much used to as coaches, which is a good old iceberg model. And you can look at the person, the person you're about to coach as the two sides of an iceberg, the top, uh, which we visualize is what we see. And we may refer this to the doing bit of the CEO. This is what we see when we, 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 we look at the CEO and the organization. We see the organizational results. We see the profits the company is making. We see the, the balance sheet. We see the, the, the efficiencies of the organization. This is a visible component of it. We see the impact the organization is having on, on the community. With That's what we are seeing when we look at it from outside. We see how the CEO is engaging with the board because a lot of the interaction uh, the CEO has is with the board. So this is what we are seeing. The board is seeing how uh, the CEO is in interacting with them. Whether it is an active interaction, whether it is a, it's a positive interaction, that is what the board is seeing. Equally, the staff. This is the visible part of the CEO's job. The external, the media, the shareholders, the other stakeholders out there, there is what they see of the CEO. All this is what I am referring to as the doing side of the CEO, which is what we interact with a lot um, as people out there and even within the organization. As this is happening, there's a lot of agendas that the CEO has to deal with. Every person is interacting with has their own agenda. They want to, the, to influence the CEO in a particular direction. So there are very many dynamic agendas that the CEO is dealing with on a continuous basis. There are board dynamics to think about. There are 
those who are within the board who are pushing uh, aligned with the CEO's agenda, there are those who may not necessarily be as aligned. The board itself uh, may be supportive of the CEO, the, it may have a different dynamic. There's a lot of competitive pressure uh, out there. Uh, the, the, the market is changing. There are also internal conflicts the CEO has to deal with. The external shocks that uh, come from out there, technology is changing, the legislative uh, environment is changing. The CEO has to deal with all this which we optically see at how he shows up in his job. But that's just one side of the coin. There is a second part of the CEO's uh, dynamic, which is what I would call the doing, the lower part, what we don't see. And there is a lot that is happening here, which is of interest to the coach. So the CEO will come to you, most likely the entry point will be from the top. But as a coach, we know there's a lot that is going on below the surface for this uh, CEO. He has dreams and aspirations, just like any of us, which may not necessarily be out there. He may not be necessarily be surface to the people that are around him. He has fears, he has apprehensions, he has uncertainties, he has a past. The CEO has a part of it which is growing, part of it not very complimentary, part of it maybe stinking. So he has a past or she has a past that affects who they show up as. And the way the CEO's job is, a lot of it is socialized from a background where there's a lot of expectations as you've seen on the top of the part of the CEO. So they have supposedly this strong, bold character that is walking across the organization. But these human aspects are part and parcel of this person. Now, this is important for the coaches that when all this is happening, not everything is, 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 is in their conscious awareness. Very many blind spots uh, in the life of the coach. They have families behind there. Now, all these things tied together give the coach, I mean, the, the, the CEO a certain worldview, a perspective of how he carries himself as he does his job. Now, all these are things that as the coach, we need to carry along as we walk and want to coach the CEO and coach them effectively. When you combine all these things, the top, the bottom, it means that this person called the CEO has a lot, a lot, a lot that is going on at any one point simultaneously. There's a lot of stuff that is happening in their life, in their work. Now, where do they go for support? Do they go to the board? Do they go to other CEOs? Do they go to friends? Do they go to family? Now, this is where coaching comes in to offer very unbiased, uh, non-judgmental and non-threatening space uh, for the CEO to be able to reflect and be very safely do so. Now, for us as coaches who want to coach uh, CEOs, then we must then be very conscious about all these dynamics that are happening in the life of the client whom we are dealing with. This calls for us to have an even very heightened uh, consciousness of the fourth uh, ICF competence, the cultivating trust and safety. For us as coaches, we intend to coach CEOs. Competency number four then becomes very critical for us. So who then, having seen who the CEO is, just a glimpse of it, because there's a lot more that uh, all these things I've said, you can put ETC, ETC, ETC for the coach, uh, for the client, for the CEO. Now let's, let's re reflect on ourselves as coaches who intend to coach CEOs then. So thinking about uh, the CEO's coach, again, let's not forget that we are just like the, the, the client, the CEO, we have the two sides. And it's important for us to always bear this in mind that we work with our, the doing side <laughs> of us and the being side of us. Now we bring this conscious awareness as we engage with this person who is dealing with a lot at any one time. Now, for us, as coaches, our primary focus is our clients. So it is, and, and what the client is seeing in us, what is visible for our client here is really the coaching engagement. For the CEO, we may do everything else, but what they're interested in on this, the, 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 the top part or our iceberg is how we engage with them as a coach. And I'll spend a bit of time on that engagement. 
But that doesn't negate the fact that just like our clients, the CEO, we still have the bottom part of us. We have our own past, we have our own blind spots. We only have the advantage of the fact that we are coaches, we reflect on this a lot, but this needs us to reflect even more when you are doing this for the top of the organization who has all the dynamics that we've just spoken about. So who then do we then to appear to the CEO as? How do we need to show up as a coach to the CEO? What do we need? What is that that we need beyond uh, every other person who is coaching every other person out there? And I look at this in three parts. One is the very minimum expected standard, which all of us as coaches, regardless of whom we are coaching, is expected. But if we've got to succeed, then something has to be different about us if we, if we wish to peg our coaching at the CEO level. There must be something that differentiates us from the rest of the people who are calling themselves coaches who also want to tap into that market of the CEO. And the last thing that I want to put there is that there needs to be alignment at the human level uh, for us as people who want to coach the executives. In terms of the minimum, there is the basic obviously expected coaching competency that any coach will have. You have gone through the, the, the ICF coaching competencies if you are an ICF uh, coach. You have some basic minimum experience, that's a given. And any coach out there will have that. If you think about it, ICF coaches at the moment over 56,000 of them out there so we must ask ourselves what will differentiate us if we are to coach the CEO, because the CEO will obviously be expecting a certain level of standard. If you narrow down that and you say you are looking at uh, credentialed coaches, there are over 40,000 or 43,000 of them at SEC, PCC, MCC. So that's not really what's going to differentiate you. So what will make you stand out um, is, is what we want to think about. Now, what will differentiate you? Your coaching model must be one that pegs and aligns to the CEO. And we'll be looking at that in a short while. How do you align that to the CEO? The sort of experiences that uh, CEOs will be looking out for, we'll also be looking out at what differentiates you from the other coaches who will come and want to coach the CEO. It may not necessarily be CEO experience or executive experience, but experience in coaching executive, ex experience in coaching coaches then starts differentiating you from the rest of the people. The model that you approach, you use to coach cannot just be, the, these people look for something specific and we'll be looking at the journey of coaching with them. Then most importantly is how you connect you as human beings. You, have a, you are a being, they are a being, how do you connect? Remember these are people who on very few occasions are they allowed to be vulnerable, are they allowed to be human? So how do you create the same space for them to be that, to be able to be truly authentic with yourself without having to put on any mask when they come for your coaching session? Remember the coaching session is maybe the only time they have to be their true authentic self if you create the right ecosystem for them to be so. So the connection becomes very important how you connect as human beings so that the person can be truly, truly themselves when they come for the coaching session. So let's, let's then move to the coaching engagement itself. Now, think of the coaching engagement as a journey. And for us wanting to engage with the CEO, it's important to visualize this journey from the beginning to the end. And we think how we are going to engage with the clients appropriately around these different spaces of the journey. So we think about of how we'll, we engage at the start of this journey, along the journey as we go along and how we end up uh, at the closure of this journey. As we do this, this calls for courage. This is a journey of courage on the two parties that are engaging in it. The CEO needs to be courageous. They need to be to have the courage to still pursue their big vision as a CEO, but they also need the courage to allow themselves to be vulnerable, to acknowledge that they are human beings, they are some blind spots, they are some different ways, they are willing to test different perspectives. They, are, they need the courage to acknowledge that they have gaps that they would need to, uh, to address. They need to have the courage to be able to um, challenge their own perspective, their own assumptions, 
and CEOs have risen to that job on account of doing a good job. So there is always a belief that I am the best. There is not much I can change. There is, there is, there is no, no different perspective. So the coach also needs to have the courage to challenge the CEO beyond their ordinary. So courage is required on both ends. We as coaches, as we coach the CEO, remember this person is used to hearing the best of them being said. As we've said, those coming to them have their agendas. So people will come and praise them and tell them how great and how fantastic they are. But for us to keep improving, the CEO to keep improving, they must challenge that narrative. They must keep improving from one level to the other. And as the coach, if we are coaching the CEO, we must have the courage to be able to be offer that challenge to the CEO so that they see different perspectives and they pursue the different uh, perspectives and the different ways of doing things and the, the different ways of pursuing their vision. Now, the agendas for the, for, the, for the CEO primarily start off with the doing side. Just because of the way we are socialized, a lot of us, by the time you are getting to the CEO, you have that narrative of knowing a lot. So a lot of the CEOs will come with a coaching uh, agenda around the doing side. Maybe I need to double my, 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 my business. I need to do this. But as you go along this journey, you bring in the other aspect of the coach, which are the being parts, which is where real transformation starts to happen. So let's, let's, let's take a little bit of this journey in a, in, a, in a slightly deeper layer of detail on the three parts, the beginnings, the middle, the journey, and, and the closure. Now, at the start of the journey, just like all good coaches, we start with our contracting. Now, for, for the CEO, we want to be sure that we are contracting on a, on a, on a, on a relationship uh, side as opposed to contracting so much on a transactional side. Now, transactional side, maybe the coach, uh, the CEO coming and saying, I want to double my profits. That's, that's what I want us to contract uh, for. And I want us to have three sessions. So very transactional, three sessions, and that should be it. A lot of times, CEO coaching will be a relation that you'll set up for a while. And most likely, it will end up mutating from one, uh, one coaching objective to another along that journey. So the contracting is very important that we, we contract on a relationship, most likely uh, starting from uh, the doing part. But I want to get to the, to the second part of our starting, which is getting into their journey. The CEO's journey is one where, as a coach, we need to, to take a bit of time to understand their space, which is the reason I started by just sharing what their world is like. Their world is what we see. Their business has different, um, has the two sides, the doing and the being. And as I said, they're most likely coming to the coaching from the, the doing side. But as you go along, you will hopefully create, uh, competency number four will allow you to create the space for them to bring the other side of their world because we are a comprehensive human being. We are not just one aspect of the coin. We have the two sides and the two of them operate simultaneously. And remember, as coaches, we, we impact the personal and professional and uh, career side of our, of our clients. So speaking their language becomes important. CEOs have a certain language that they use. Plug into that language. The industry takes some interest in knowing what is happening in their world so that you can start clicking, you can start uh, aligning at the right level. CEOs need to trust you very much before they can really get to open up because they, that safe space exists in very few places. So the more you learn the language, the more you get to understand their world right from the word go. So as you prepare on, on for your coaching engagement with this CEO, if it's an industry that you may not be very familiar with, just get into that space, understand the trends, understand the key dynamics within that space so that you are able to engage in a way that even when they have a perspective, you are able to reasonably challenge that perspective, not necessarily offering your, your, your ideas because that will, will, will move away from coaching, but being able to offer a good challenge to their perspectives. So as you start the journey, as you contract, be able to move freely into their world. As you move through this uh, coaching journey, as you walk along this journey with the, with the client, you must keep aligning yourselves to them. 
you must keep remembering that this person has a doing part, which is what a lot of us will see. But increasingly, as you go along the journey, if the relationship is working well, the being part will increasingly become evident to you. The, the client will start getting to trust you more, to be more vulnerable to you in places where they have their fears about the business, they have their uh, fears about the people they are working with, their aspirations, and so forth. So you align yourself to them, align your journey to what it is that they are pursuing at the personal, at the professional, at the organizational level. Align your doing to their doing, align your being to their being, so that you can be able to flow with them in a, in a nice way. Now for them, as you go along, the listening part becomes very important because stepping back and asking yourself about the CEO and patched at the top of the organization, uh, you, you have to get to that space where they, they earn your trust enough to be able to speak in a way that you can, you can understand easily and be ready to challenge the first thing that they throw out and go beyond several layers until you get to the very bottom of what it is that they are really saying. Listen out for other needs as they speak. Listen out to the words below, uh, I mean, the, 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 the unspoken uh, actions below their words. The CEO may be speaking about or indicating other needs which may not necessarily come to the surface without you uh, unpacking a little further. And this could be needs for other interventions as well within the organization or even within the CEO themselves. There could be needs that the rest of the organization needs. There could be needs that the CEO themselves need. There could be need for the CEO for other interventions. Remember, we've talked about their past, which as they grow within their profession, as they grow within their industry, there may be some past that need even other intervention. There may be some needs that needs therapy. And there are very few places will be safe enough for them to surface those needs. So you as the, as the coach, as you go along the journey, listen now to those needs so that you may refer them to the appropriate place. Very few CEOs will own up and say, I actually need some help in this particular side until you build that confidence with them. As you do so, be very deliberate about how you are tracking your progress with them. CEOs, a lot of them understand and speak and want to work with the, the numbers. So as you are contracting, one of the things that is important to do is to have some measurables, have some quantums that you will be working through. CEOs start with the doing side. So if it's a business, if it's a commercial enterprise, think about what it is that you'll be indicating to the CEO that you are moving the right direction. Because by the end of the day, CEOs are measured by results. So you want to track progress. You want to have some certain parameters that you are tracking that are trickling in from your coaching uh, experience. As you do that, as you track that progress, also remember to keep adjusting appropriately. A lot of times you'll find that the coaching objectives will keep getting refined as you go along. As the, the coaching progresses, you find yourselves refining the objectives and at the start, it's always good to have some very specific tracking dashboard that you, at the contracting stage that you come up with, which will help you track this very well along the journey. As you move along towards the end, it's important that uh, having gone through all that, having continued to track the results along the way, that as you move towards the close, that you have a very structured closer, uh, closure session. A session that will help you focus on the journey from the beginning to the end along the middles. If you change the, the coaching objectives along the way, how do those map out in terms of success from the beginning to the end? Review that very well during your closure session. Remember results talks to CEOs. So look at what you contracted, what was the dashboard you created at the beginning, look at how it has evolved along the way. As you do that during this session, you, are, you should be explicit about what next after this. And then what next could be, sorry? What next 
could be by way of uh, maybe another big coaching agenda will come along. Maybe other intervention for the organization for the teams will come along. Maybe other engagements will come along, referrals will come along. Whatever that is, it's important that for the CEO, uh, especially when you yourself you are thinking as, as, as a coach who is in, 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 you want to keep creating much more impact from one CEO to the next, think of how this particular engagement moves on to the other engagements. Then you appreciate them and uh, decide on what the post-engagement support is going to look like. Are you going to have some check-in after that? Are you going to, what, what is that going to be? Are you going to touch base after three months, after six months? The closing needs to be as tidy as any part of the process so that you are not just having a transaction, you are having a relationship. And most CEO engagements normally mutate into something else, either within the organization or with the respective CEO that you've been coaching. So as I move towards closure and then opening up uh, for questions then, let me just summarize uh, and say that coaching the CEO then is you cannot just be another coach. You have to pitch yourself as the CEO's coach. You have to be deliberate about the fact that you are not just ordinary. There is something that makes you, st make you stand out uh, so that you can earn that uh, ability and capacity to coach the CEO. This calls into the CEO's world. You have to visualize the CEO's world uh, so that you are able to be of assistance to them, to be of uh, use to them. And you have to keep challenging yourself. You have to keep refreshing yourself so that you are up to speed with what's happening in the CEO's world. Tracking results, very important. Um, much more important, it is important to track results when you are, for any coaching uh, engagement. For CEOs, this becomes extremely important because as we've said, coaching, I mean, uh, CEOs are measured by results. It's not so much the effort, but the results that trickle into the, to the organization. This calls for alignment throughout the journey from the start, throughout the, the sessions, and all the way to the uh, closure of the coaching engagement. As you do so, remember that coaching the CEO, you have to keep checking that you are moving the needle towards a better person and a better leader for this person. You want them to be better beings. You want them to be better doings. That's by the end of the day why you are there in the first place. So in a nutshell, that's, that's, that's really what I wanted to share with you. Um, then we could have a conversation. The intention was to go through these slides and then we can be able to pick that from a discussion perspective. So thank you very much and back to you, Ash. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. David. It was wonderful. And what's striking most was a tune into the CEO's world. And that's what we actually black out when we do that, right? There are a lot of questions coming in, Dr. David. I will just take them on to you. Uh, so I think a lot of them come from Abhijit as well. How to challenge CEO's perspective as an internal coach? Because many times you are also are lost in the same perspective. Uh huh. Sorry, I'm I'm trying to get to the okay. Just just uh, get that uh, again. Let me hear that again. How to challenge CEO's perspective as an internal coach? Because many times you also are lost in the same perspective. So being an internal person, you are already there in the same perspective. So how do you challenge CEO's perspective? Here? Very good, very good question. Uh, very specific to um, when you are an internal coach. And this is an interesting dynamic. Can you be a coach internally and, and, and coach your CEO? I guess is, is the fundamental question here. Um, and that's an interesting one. And I don't want to give a blanket answer to that question. Uh, but I want to point out the, the different dynamics that would come into place there. Um, Coach-client relationship is a very unique relationship. So if you have a subordinate boss relationship with your CEO, those dynamics will definitely come into play when you try to play the CEO-coach relationship. Uh, because... A subordinate boss relationship, it's like a, a parent-child relationship, if you, if you think about it in, in, in normal human speak. And 
can a child coach a parent is, is, is what is going through my mind. The dynamics are different. The challenges will be different. Plugging into the CEO's perspective as an internal coach on your CEO will also be a tough uh, challenge. So coaching a CEO when you are inside and you are under them is obviously a very challenging space to be in. And depending on uh, different societies have different power dynamics uh, within them. So culturally, it may even not be imaginable in some cultures, you as, a, as somebody within the organization coaching the CEO. However, if that, that is, you are, you are in a place where the, the power distance uh, dynamics of culture is not that big and you can coach as an internal coach, I guess the conversation would be similar. Uh, but talking from the side of the world I am in, where culturally there's, there's, there's perspectives around the coach and the, I mean, the, the subordinate and the boss, it would be very difficult for, for, from where I sit on the side of our side of the world to coach uh, upwards, you are your boss. I don't know the dynamics in different parts of the world, but it will be difficult. And that's why most CEOs will normally go for an external coach because they want to be very vulnerable. Imagine you as the, as the subordinate and the CEO is being very open to you and sharing all about themselves. The work dynamics are, are likely to be impacted. So I would personally, I would, ad, I would uh, advocate for the CEO seeking external coaching so that they can be vulnerable, they can be themselves, they can be their true authentic self. That space may not allow itself if it is I'm internal and I'm reporting to the same person who will be doing my performance review at the end of the cycle. Uh, that dynamic is likely to be challenged. I don't know the answer that question uh, yeah. to the person who had asked it. So Abhijit, does it answer your question? Uh, to some extent. Right. What what extent what extent uh, is 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 left unanswered so that we can try and tackle it and 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 we can have conversation about that. Okay, okay. So I mean, uh, as an HR business partner, I'm supporting my CEO, and uh, fortunately, my CEO is a very 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 open minded person, and he's very even though I have a dotted line reporting to him, but he's very open to receive advice and uh, coaching from me. So, but sometimes I feel that during the discussion, he says, no, no, this is not going to work. This, this just doesn't work with us. And I am unable to challenge him because for past two, three years, actually, I have been doing personally the same thing because it's sort of a self-contradictory if I now start challenging him. And sometimes I feel it is difficult for me also because I'm in the same environment to think from a different perspective altogether. Uh -huh. In that case, if you are the business partner supporting the CEO from a HR perspective. My own advice in that would be to wear an advisory hat as opposed, and, and, and I would put it this way, wear an advisory hat using a coaching approach. In other words, you go there, you are giving advice because remember coaching, you are, you, 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 you'll not be giving advice to your CEO. So I would, I would, my own recommendation there would be wear the consultant hat so that you can be able to give advice you can use a coaching approach where you ask him questions to, to guide him to that perspective. But by the end of the day, your relationship from that perspective is that you are bringing uh, knowledge from a HR perspective to help him see things differently. So you are more on the consulting side than the coaching side. But because you are a coach, you have coaching competencies, you can use those in, in using powerful questions to get him to arrive at the answer. But the, the bigger part of you there is the consultant part as opposed to the coaching part. I, I don't know if that makes sense, but uh, be the consultant using a coaching approach would be my advice in that particular scenario. Yeah, I think that makes perfect sense, David, and thanks for that, because I think a single approach does not work. So I think, yes, thank you so much. Thank you, Jesus. thank you so much, David. Uh, so there's another question. Many action items worked out by CEO may take months or years to bear business results. So how do you relate that to your coaching effectiveness? Okay, many action items after it may take months or years to be a business. Mm -hmm. Okay, yes, you are very right, which is why I said for the CEO engagement, coaching the CEO is, is not something that you'll be doing a transactional approach. It's a relationship that you work with him for a while so that these results may bear, uh, may bear fruit. Typically, my, from my own experience, typical CEO engagements will be year, a year, 
Some take longer than that. Uh, some is a journey that you almost walk a lifelong. But I totally agree that uh, for, for you to see a result with a CEO, uh, sustainable results, you, you must be ready to go the long haul. It's not something that you'll get in, do a, a one month uh, and then expect to see results um, for the CEO. It is a journey that you walk along with. It also takes much more time to build the level of trust and uh, safe space that will be able to, to get the CEO to be open enough to, to be of value to that relationship. Right. Thank you so much. There's another question. Is there any recommendation on which platforms or coaching software to use for tracking coaching progress and presenting the progress dashboard? So is there any software or platform that you recommend? Um, I, I, what, what uh, I personally use is, uh, is um, for every engagement, I start with a very simple dashboard, which is which which I've designed for myself, and I adapt for the different engagements. And the key things to look out there is again using the language of the CEO, listening to them very well. What is it that is going to for them to be a significant thing that you are going to work on, and what is that going to to show up by the end of the day? So we craft the 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 dashboard with the person right at the very beginning. And we use that to, to track. Now for some of them, for, not for some of them, for most of them, especially the ones in the commercial space, there'll be some quantums that will be tracking. And I personally use very simple self-designed tools together with whatever tools they have internally within the organization to measure what it is that they want to measure. Uh, so and there are some of the shelf uh, tools that, that, that I can recommend. To be honest, for a CEO, I like customizing a lot. I take a lot of time to understand at the very beginning, what is this journey about? And we craft the journey together. Before we sign our coaching contract, spend quite a bit of time at the early bit, just understanding what that journey is going to be like. And once you get that initial dashboard very well between yourself, it then becomes very easy to walk along it. And you know what? You are not, you are not slaves to anything. You can change it along the way once you get to understand each other because initially they'll be very guarded in what they want to say. So a lot of times we've ended up changing what we are, we are working on along the way. But the initial bit of the conversation, the initial bit of the journey for me is very important. Uh, for some of the engagements, I, I do request the CEOs that I speak to a few of their people if that's okay with them so that we align what he's, he is wanting for himself and the organization with whoever he wants us to. Uh, to use as maybe sounding boards and checking whether we are progressing in the right direction according to his own desires. Okay. Great. Thank you so much, David. Uh, another one. Could you throw more light on how to seamlessly flow from the doing aspect of the CEO to the being aspect of the CEO? What is the questions he poses are how and what versus who? Okay. I am, I am trying to move down as well so that I can read the question as, as you read. I've, I've got this from Pradeep. How to seamlessly flow from the doing uh, aspect of the CEO to the being? Now, that's a very good question because as I said, most CEOs, it is safe to operate in the doing space. Because there you are discussing about uh, the things we see. But transformation is really around the being side of it. Now, here is where listening comes in a lot. You listen to statements from the CEO when they start saying things like, I am, for example, you listen to them saying, I believe, I don't believe anything is impossible. Now, that's a very deep uh, statement for you as a coach. I don't believe anything is impossible. And that's an opportunity for you to pause and just now start unpacking that so that you can see what sort of underlying beliefs are backing that. And sort of what does that mean for the rest of the people? If the CEO does not believe anything is impossible, how is he likely to be showing up in the, in the, in the organization the team is leading? And question like that is, is just maybe even just posing at that point and saying, and just repeating that question, mm, you don't believe anything is impossible and reflect around that so that you start now moving from, and they are likely to tell you a story at that point. 
Now stories start connecting you at the person to person level. They most likely at that point may share with you something that they did, which is in, in, in their respect, uh, super ordinary. And they might relate that to the organization and tell you about this team member who they have to keep pushing because of A, B, C, D. So listening out to the things they say, or them saying, I am so impatient, or I just can't stand people who are like this. All those statements that they make are very nice entry points to transition from the doing to the being part. So listening becomes very important. Sometimes it's not even the question, but just slowing them down to help them reflect on what they've just said and having made a very deep statement that you help them bring it to their conscious awareness that the fact that I don't believe anything is impossible may be actually the reason why I'm having so much conflict with my team members because not every team member has the same belief. So there's one more question here uh, by CN. The question is, for CEO coaching, it appears that using the eye where the focus is on the wider context is often a big need. Now, given that as a coach, we have limited time available with most CEOs with few sessions contracted for. How would a CEO bring in efficiency into the process by not losing out on being of total service to the CEO? So how would a coach, basically, I think that's a typo, how would a coach bring in efficiency into the process by not losing out on being of total service to the CEO? I'm looking for that uh, question. Um... It's by CN Murthy. So he's saying that there is limited time available with the CEO. There are limited number of sessions available. Very few sessions we have contracted with the CEO. So how would the coach bring in efficiency in the process by not losing out on being of total service to the CEO? Very good. Um, now, there, there are very many ways that people contract to coach CEOs. Um, there are contracts that uh, will be for X number of uh, sessions. Personally, for CEOs, I, 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 I go for period-based uh, period based approach as opposed to session-based approach. And the reason I do that is because um, the, the, the session-based approach has a way of uh, making, looking so much like, uh, like, uh, like a transactional engagement. When I'm on a period based, and, and, and I guess I'm able to do that because I'm an external uh, coach and I, I, I do my, my client sourcing in a way that then helps me to, to convince the client where we should uh, contract in a, in a particular way, is that I don't want to be held uh, hostage by feeling that uh, we now have only two more sessions to go. Um, I want to make sure that by the end of the day, the client, uh, the coach, achieves the objectives. So depending on what the contracting arrangement is, and, and as I said, the beginning of the journey, the middle is important, but the beginning is for me a very critical part. If I can be able to make that move from uh, sessions to a period, much the better. So that I am able to then flow with the client at their pace and create the appetite for him to be showing up for those sessions as and when they are, they are needed. Um, now, depending then on, on your working arrangement, if it's session-based, then you have got then to be, again, very open to the client and be very be, build the relationship in a way that you can be able to focus your sessions. Be vulnerable yourself, have the courage to be vulnerable to say, you know what? Maybe you are, you are uh, contracted by somebody to offer X number of sessions. Be vulnerable to the CEO to make him part of your planning. We have these uh, seven sessions. This is where we are. How do, we, how do you feel we should shape the rest of the sessions? So as I said, it requires courage for both of you. If there is something that uh, you are feeling is going to impact your relationship, have the courage to surface it, bring it so that it becomes part of your conversation and face it with the client and um, have the courage to change even the nature of the contracted relationship is, is how I would answer that. Courage on both of you to be vulnerable. If you are having some fears and apprehensions, be courageous enough to bring those up so that you can be able to, to deal with them. Great. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. David. I don't think there are any more questions now. And uh, 
So thank you so much. It was very insightful, and there are a lot of compliments coming in regarding the session being very impactful, very powerful, very profound. So thank you so much, and thank you all for joining in today. I have copy pasted the link on the chat box where you can fill in your form and submit it. We will send you the CCUs in the month of December. Yeah, and once again, Rini, thank you so much, and have a good day. Thank you so much, Dr. Rini. Most welcome. Thank you for having me. Thank you.